Fifth Monarchists The Fifth Monarchists or Fifth Monarchy Men were an extreme Puritan sect active from 1649 to 1660 during the Interregnum, following the English Civil Wars of the 17th century. They took their name from a prophecy in the Book of Daniel that four ancient monarchies, Babylonian, Persian, Macedonian, and Roman, would precede the Kingdom of Christ. They also referred to the year 1666 and its relationship to the biblical number of the beast indicating the end of earthly rule by carnal human beings. They were one of a number of nonconformist dissenting groups that emerged around this time. The Fifth Monarchists were one of many groups of Christian believers during and after the English Civil War whose theological beliefs challenged the more mainstream ideas of the day. Specifically, they believed in a geopolitical theory which maintained that four world rulers had already come and gone according to the prophecies of Daniel 2 in the Old Testament. This text recounts a prophetic dream by Nebuchadnezzar. The previous empires of which he dreamed were interpreted to have been Babylonian, Persian, Greek and Roman, the last empire, the monarchists concluded, would be established by the returning Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to reign with his saints on earth for a thousand years. The fifth monarchists saw themselves as those saints of that soon-to-be dawning millennium. Among prominent fifth monarchists were Thomas Harrison, Christopher Feek, Vavisar Powell, John Carew, John Rogers, and Robert Blackburn, Secretary of the Admiralty and later of the British East India Company. Fifth monarchists believed that the timing of the events of the interregnum were significant because the calendar year 1666 loomed large on the near horizon. The number 666 had been identified in the book of Revelation with the ultimate human despot to rule the world, who would be replaced by the second coming of the Messiah. This only added to the belief that the fifth monarchy was about to begin. A number of fifth monarchists took a leading part in the events of the time. Thomas Harrison and John Carew were commissioners, judges, at the trial of Charles C. and signed the death warrant. Following Charles' death, Oliver Cromwell set up the Commonwealth as a more pure form of government to replace the existing monarchy. Cromwell had not intended it but, not long after establishing the Commonwealth, he dismissed the Parliament and became, in effect, a military dictator. The Fifth Monarchists were also a significant opponent of the Rump Parliament. Leading Fifth Monarchists such as Vavisar Powell were unhappy with the Rump's failure to renew certain pieces of legislation, such as the Act for the Propagation of the Gospel in Wales, because they believed that the Rump was not fulfilling what the Fifth Monarchists perceived to be its same, that is to turn England into a more godly nation. Leading Fifth Monarchists also had an influence on Oliver Cromwell, as it was Thomas Harrison's idea to introduce the nominated assembly, Beerbones Parliament as a body of religious men. However this was not completely the case as a large proportion of the assembly were conservative-minded gentry such as Sir Anthony Ashley Cooper. This influence on Cromwell did not last, however, as just six months after he had created the nominated assembly, Cromwell dissolved it in favor of Major General John Lambert's more conservative instrument of government. The Republican governments of England were introduced after the English Civil War during the Interregnum, 1649-60. One thousand six hundred forty nine fifty three was founded on the execution of Charles I in sixteen forty nine, and was followed by the two protectorates of Oliver Cromwell, one thousand six hundred fifty three to fifty eight, and his son Richard Cromwell I, one thousand six hundred fifty eight fifty nine. The Commonwealth was briefly revived, one thousand six hundred fifty nine sixty, before the restoration of the monarchy in the person of Charles II in May sixteen sixty. After the forcible dissolution of the Rump Parliament by Oliver Cromwell, the grandees of the Army Council of Officers were reluctant to authorize free elections because they were aware that the traditional constituency would return Presbyterians and Royalists as well as their own sympathizers. They were not at all sure that the majority would be any more compliant than the Rump. Major General Thomas Harrison, who had commanded the troops aided Oliver Cromwell in dissolving the Rump, suggested that there be a ruling body based upon the Old Testament Sanhedrin of seventy selected saints, which was based on his beliefs, as a fifth monarchist, that the rule of the saints would usher in the reign of Christ on earth. A modified version of this proposal was accepted by Cromwell and the Council of Officers, and less than a month after the dissolution of the Rump, during May 1653, letters in the name of the Lord General and the Army Council were sent to congregational churches in every county in England to nominate Teth as they considered fit to take part in the new government. The total number of nominees was 140, 129 from England, 5 from Scotland and 6 from Ireland. The arrest of Feek and Powell was sufficient for a time to dampen their ardor, 
but many of the delegates to Bourbon's parliament were from congregations with Fifth Monarchist sympathies. This assembly, which met from July until December 1653, was the high watermark of Fifth Monarchist influence on national politics. Fearing their ultra-radical ideas, which crystallized in an attack on tithes, the conservative faction led by Major General John Lambert, supported by the use of troops to deny access to the radical factions, engineered a vote for the dissolution of the assembly, which was passed on 12 December 1653. The collapse of the radical consensus that had spawned the nominated assembly led to the grandees passing the instrument of government in the Council of State, which paved the way for Cromwell's protectorate. The fifth monarchists were horrified at the establishment of Cromwell's protectorate and plotted to overthrow the regime. Two plots were uncovered and broken up in 1657 and 1659. After the restoration on October 14, 1660 Major General Thomas Harrison was the first person to be found guilty of the regicide of Charles I. He had been the 17th of 59 commissioners, judges, to sign the death warrant of the king in 1649. He was the first regicide to be hanged, drawn and quartered because he was considered by the new government to represent a continued real threat to the re-established order. This threat was realized when, on January 6, 1661, 55th monarchists, headed by a wine cooper named Thomas Fenner, from their alleged hideout in Norton Fulgate made an effort to attain possession of London in the name of King Jesus. Most of the 50 were either killed or taken prisoner, and on 19 and 21st of January Fenner and 10 others were hanged drawn and quartered for high treason. The failure of Venner's rising led to repressive legislation to suppress nonconformist sects. Although some physical events such as the Great Plague of London and the Great Fire of London continued to encourage belief in the end of the world ruled by carnal human beings, the doctrine of the sect either died out or became merged in a milder form of millenarianism. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.